The Bengals passing offense is fairly easy to figure out, at least from a market standpoint. I mean, we've got Jamar Chase going in the first round, T. Higgins going at the 2-3 turn, and Joe Mixon also going there. Joe Burrow is being drafted in the top 10 for all quarterbacks. We've got like our core pieces of the Bengals passing offense. And if you listen to our own Alex Caruso talking about the case for T. Higgins and his top five potential, 100% agree with that idea. I mean, if we look at T. Higgins from last season, over the back half of the la- uh, 2021 season, he was more efficient than his own teammate in the dynamic duo of him and Jamar Chase. But I want value shares of that offense. I possibly can, because we know this is going to be a productive offense. If the market is telling us anything, it's going to be a fantasy-friendly offense with so many players being drafted in the top 100. So if I can Get another pass catcher that's attached to a quarterback in Joe Burrow that was top 10 in both EPA per play and completion percentage over expected. I'm going to try and see if I can do some bargain hunting and sell you on the case for Tyler Boyd after what was a disappointing 2021 season. But let me see if there's a case to be made for him in this week's episode of By the Numbers. So let's get right on into it. I mean, 2021... I wish there was a better way to, I guess, a better way to contextualize or a better way to, I guess, comb over or brush over the fact that it was a disappointment because I, like most of you, was looking forward to seeing Tyler Boyd really excel in that offense. Like with Joe Burrow being back, they get Jamar Chase, they have T. Higgins. It was going to be this dynamic trio, but we really only saw it to be a dynamic duo like with Chase and Higgins. But let's 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 try and look at everything from uh like a high level picture if we possibly can uh because again like by the numbers i mean look like the the bengals passing offense was just tough to figure out like from a volume standpoint this is from our good friends over at established to run if we look at the bengals passing offense and their pass rate over expectation on a week-to-week basis i mean the first part of the season weeks one through eight i mean it took them almost half the season for them to even get above the league average in neutral passing rate i mean believe me like you can see the hat like sitting behind me like that was it was tough to watch at some points i mean sure i was happy that they were winning happy they were collecting wins uh that loss against the jets uh i was that was a tough day for me but there were at least there were at least enough there that we we knew that the volume could be there we knew that the passing options and the talent was there we just wanted to see more from joe bro we wanted to see more out of that passing offense and it took us a while to get there but let's say for instance that there's not going to be more passing. We're not expecting them to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2022. Let's say that they finish around the same rank in terms of neutral passing that they did in 2021, which was 13th. So where would the volume have to come from in order for Tyler Boyd to really even get get to like more of our expectations? Because last year, between the target shares of T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, both around 23 to 25%, and then we saw Tyler Boyd back down around like 17%. So where is that volume supposed to come from if the total volume for the entire offense is supposed to change? I mean, we can't really expect more or like or less from Joe Mixon. He had fewer targets or a lesser target share than Ezekiel Elliott and Jonathan Taylor. Right, so what where more is this supposed to come from? Well, uh, there's a t- there's a tiny possibility that CJ Uzuma's departure is more of an effect on Tyler Boyd than we really do think. Because if we look over the uh, just uh, the, again that part of the season where they weren't passing all that often, I mean Tyler Boyd at the beginning of the season was looking great. I mean he was up there at that 20% target share, red zone targets were okay, targets per route were. I mean all of the metrics that I typically look at for a wide receiver and their opportunity through the first like first eight weeks were great. I mean T Higgins did miss a couple of games. Jamar Chase was still coming on as the wide receiver run for that team, so. We thought that there could be at least some sort of way for a boy to be a, let's see, a, a, at least a decent part of that offense, like as they started to add more and more chase and like, get Higgins back as well. But as we got towards the back half of the season, the offense took off. Boyd was somewhat left behind. I mean, every, almost every metric except for his air yard share dropped. Like once we got to the back half of the season, week nine, like I mentioned beforehand, after they had a greater than league average neutral passing rate, that's where everything started to drop. But then, so why is that? And so what actually happened? Well, we saw more pass catchers being involved in offense, CJ Uzuma being one of them. At the beginning of the season, like if we think about the function for Tyler Boyd, he's got an 8.0 A dot. 
he runs about 80 to 85 percent of his routes from the slot I mean, part of his function is being there on third down so as the way for the team to actually continue to uh, continue drives like down the field and that has been like his role for quite some time i mean he's been first or second in third down targets like for the Bengals, like since 2018 when he became more of a full-time player last season at the beginning like i mentioned that was his role like that he did have like he was tied for first in terms of third down targets after that like once they got into the back half of the season he dropped all the way down to fourth he was splitting so much time with cj uzma because uzma also runs the same like his average depth of target is in the same area of the field that's also where he was starting to compete for targets against cj uzma and we can see like there's just a number of ways that we can see that target volume start to shift back towards Boyd with Uzma's departure and his arrival over in uh, over in New York with the Jets. I mean, we can see the split right there. It's just pesky enough that you know for Boyd, like once you know, if we see a few more third down targets coming his way, like once we see a few more red zone targets coming his way from what CG Uzma had, I mean, this could be the way that he winds up at least. Being at least uh, making the like meeting his ADP right now, which is wide receiver 52 over on underdog. And that's really where I think he's being appropriately priced, but the upside case is there for him. Hayden Hurst, I'm sure, should like, will be a part of that offense, but the red zone targets, I can't see that happening at least at the earlier parts of the season. He doesn't have the same connection that Uzma had since Uzma had been a part of the offense when Joe Burrow was a rookie. Also doesn't create as much after the catch. As, uh, as C.G. Uzma does as well. So, I mean, again, wide receiver 52 and underdog. I'm more than happy to take him there at that cost, especially the types of receivers that he's going around. Right behind Chase Claypool, guys like Robert Woods as well, who might see a larger target share, a bit more dynamic, but ahead of some of the guys that at least have some at least injury concerns of Michael Gallup, uncertainty in their role in Rondell Moore. So with that, I mean, go out and get you some Tyler Boyd if you can, if you still believe like I do, again, Cincinnati bias aside. But with all that, appreciate y'all taking a look at these videos each and every week between Mr. Caruso, Victoria, I mean, all the other folks here at Football Guys, appreciate y'all for checking the, uh, all these videos out and I'll catch y'all next week. Peace.